Okie dokie, welcome back. This is episode 8 of my Minecraft Let's Play, and I've got some big news. I found slime balls! And that's, oh god, cows. Okay, I don't know if you can hear them or not, but you probably can, given how loud they are. And I still don't know how to make game sounds, um, how to record game sounds, but, oh, now they're scared. Yeah, you better be scared. I hate you. Um, anyway, so I found a bunch of slime balls, and I'm going to make a slime farm, if at all possible, because I want more. <laughs> 15 pistons, not that much. Um, the door that I want to make for my front door with the sticky pistons um, requires 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 12 sticky pistons. So that's a bit more than, you know, I don't know. But uh, I need a lot more slime balls. So I'm probably going to make a slime farm. Also because you can use them to make magma cream when you get um, into alchemy and stuff, which I'll do eventually, but I need to get into the nether first and all that good stuff. So, let's see, I got... Oh, and I found two mob spawners, a skeleton spawner and a spider spawner, within, like, 20 blocks of each other. So, I, I would have loved to... I actually have to find that. I have no idea where it is. Um, <laughs> because I found it, and then wandered away from it, and now I'll probably never see it again. But if at all possible, I'm going to make a mob trap there, and... That way, I'll be able to farm experience and, um, uh, as well as arrows and bones and spider eyes. I think you can get those from the regular spiders, right? I'm not sure. Um, but it shouldn't be a problem. I should be able to easily just kill them. And I, like, Etho, actually, um, Etho's lab, he's a fantastic Let's Player, um, he recently did something similar with cave spiders. He found a couple spawners next to each other and hooked them up so that he could just, like, farm experience from them. And that was a great idea. And honestly, I really feel like I should do the same thing. Because if I ever want to get any kind of enchantment on my items, then I'm going to need to farm experience. Because going out at night and killing enemies at night, it's just, it's not efficient. You get, like, I have gotten in the past, even with, like, strength potions and enchanted weapons and stuff, I can still only get, like, nine levels a night. All of the levels I've got now are just from me running around and fighting stuff in caves or whatever. Um, I did not find many monsters down there, uh, or at least not for the most part. I think it was because I was, um, I was down there at night for the most part, so all of the mobs were spawning on the surface instead of down there. Which is alright. Um, it made things a lot easier. I've got some gold here, so actually I should make a... Um, I'm going to make a compass and a watch so that I can tell what time it is. Actually, I'll make a, I'm will going to make a map out of the compass, but I need to make the compass first. Cause, whoa. That's new. I didn't know you could do that. Well, that's cool, actually, because that means I can make uh, the glistering melons without having to go to the nether. Although it's better to go to the nether because you can get them as many as... Killing zombie pigmen gives you um, diamond... I mean, diamond. Uh, gold chunk things. So that works nicely. My my reed farm, I came back up and it was all full. So I've got a bunch of reeds now. So I can make a... I'm lagging a little bit, so the sometimes it's messing up when I'm trying to place things. So I can make a map. All right. Um. Oh right. Um. Uh, <laughs> I have a friend who's doing a Chrono Trigger, I believe. Let's play. It's either Chrono Cross or Chrono Trigger. I can never remember. I'm pretty sure it's Chrono Trigger. But um. He put a shout out to me in his last video, so thank you very much for that. And he. I, you should check him out, because he's pretty cool. Um, he's as new to this whole recording thing as I am, so don't expect anything fantastic, but, like, quality... Uh, he's a good Blitz player, though, so you should watch him. Um, I'll put a link to him in the description, because... Or maybe I'll make an annotation, I'm not sure. Um, if I do, it'll probably appear sometime around now when I'm talking about it. So, if it's already up there, then, well, there you go. Um, anyway, so yeah, I can make that sticky piston door now, although I don't know if I have enough space for it, 
because let's see. It's gonna need it's gonna go to there. I should be fine, I think. Um, particularly because if most of the wiring is done over here, then I can just have it run over and or, or under and go over there. So my next episode will probably be me making that new door. Um I might just copy this world into a um, creative map and then just do it to see if I have enough space first and then once I've decided I have enough space I'll go ahead and do it out um, let's see if I want to have that it should work with the button here I'm not entirely sure though I hope it does because that'd be cool to just have the button stay there I don't want to have to put it in some weird place but I should be able to just have like a button right there to I don't know. Oh, that doesn't work anymore? I thought you used to be able to just hold it down. Alright. So, wow, that must have been annoying. Anyway, um, then again, you can't hear, hear the pistons. So keep in mind that whenever I'm like testing stuff, like the pistons or whatever, I can hear it opening and closing. So if it just, if I'm just making something and I go, oh, okay, it's working, and it appears that there's no reason for me to say that, it's probably because I could hear it and you can't. So, again, I, I don't know if there's a way to um, get it to record the audio from the game with my current setup, but I'll, I'll try to figure it out. Actually, I think I saw um, my friend doing it. I'm not really sure, though. His audio messed up pretty bad on one of his videos, and that was the only video that I remember hearing game audio, so I'm not sure if that was related to it or not, but... Um, so, um, yep, I don't want to talk about. I did get a ton of iron. Like I came back with, okay, okay. So I've got this much iron to begin with, and then I've got 31 in there, and then this was a stack, this was a stack, this was a stack. So that's three stacks, and then not that chest, half a stack, and then like half a stack there. So I've got like seven stacks of iron now, and uh, so yeah. I think it's it's definitely safe to say that I'm okay using iron tools and making iron armor and everything. There's just so much stuff down there. Oh my god, it's amazing. Um, but yeah, so I, I do want to make the mob traps, and I want to do the piston door. I will do the piston door next episode, I promise. Um, and I may just make it longer if it doesn't fit in the 10 minutes, because... Again, that's why I would make the test world just to do it first and make sure I have enough space because I don't know if I will be able to or... Because, I mean, it does take some space to do a lot of wiring like that. And I'm not really sure how it'll work. I may just have to, like, pull the wiring up here somewhere and then pull it back down. And that would be pretty interesting because I've never done something like that before. Um, because this button is going to have to be hooked up to an RS nor latch, which... I mean, sorry... T flip flop, which I can do with just regular pistons, not a sticky piston. Um, and then that is just what controls the power. And once I've. All it really needs is. Like, you've got the. The way the, the door would work is you'd have four pistons, sticky pistons, facing me from behind these four blocks. And then you'd have two sticky pistons here and here facing me again. Um, and then two blocks of whatever you want the door to be made of. So then, when you turn it on, the power, the T flip flop means that when you press this button, it, instead of just opening and closing like these pistons are, it stays open, or it st or, and then it toggles back to closed if you push the button again. Um, so it effectively turns the button into a lever, which it looks a lot nicer when it's a button. Um, I might just have to make it a lever if I can't fit the T flip flop in. But, aside from that, um, you've just got these pistons, and then once you activate the back pistons, they push out these blocks, and then you power these pistons from above and below, and then they push forward so that this wall comes out flat. And I think just think it looks a lot nicer than the um, this indent in the wall. It's just like pretty obvious that it's there. I mean, you can't really hide it or anything, and yeah. So yeah, um, I'll do that next episode, and then I'll try to find the spawners again and try to make a trap there but well that might be in the future not too long in the future but in the future nonetheless just because I don't know how prepared I am to do that 
Um, so, because I'm not really sure what I'm going to do, I, I guess I'll try to, I don't know, I'll explain it later. Okay, so I know I haven't got much, got much accomplished this episode, but uh, thanks for sticking with me, because it's, it's going to be great once I figure out what I'm going to do with all this stuff. Um, and then once, this is going to be my first base, obviously, so once I've gotten everything I want to set up here, if I've set up everything I want to set up here, then I might move away. And wow, that's a lot of iron. I should make some iron boxes of that. Anyway, I have to go. Okay, thank you for watching. This has been episode 7, and you're awesome. So, yeah. Good way to end it, right? Sure.